All right. Hey, we're live. We are live on Facebook. That's what we are right now. So welcome to the Nurture panel. And uh, we are going to have some jolly good fun talking about how we love to make things safe for other people. Because yes, I am also a nurturer. Not that I'm going to talk about myself, but I could if you want me to, but I won't. So um, I'm really excited for you to check in, like check out the vibe with these nurturers, right? This, there's a uniqueness here um, because when we figure out our deepest why, right? It's, it's a guiding principle. It helps you focus. It helps you get out there and really make a difference consistently. Mm -hmm. That's my entire reason for being is to help people do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, so take inspiration from these wonderful nurturers. I've worked with every single one of them. I've seen the successes they've had, so I can't wait for you to meet them. Let's do a quick intro. Um, so you know who's here and I'm going to start with Amanda. Amanda, who are you? What do you do? So my name is Amanda Hammett. I live in Atlanta, Georgia. I am known professionally as the millennial translator because I help companies attract, retain, and engage next-gen talent. So whether that's a millennial or a Gen Z, I help you recruit, retain, and engage them all the way through. Ooh. Fantastic. And Sarah? Hi, my name is Sarah McBurney Laporto, and I'm a real estate agent based in Beverly, Massachusetts. Fantastic. Amy Berenson. Great. Um, I live in Marblehead, Mass, as mentioned, and I'm a life and career coach and a workshop leader. And I hopefully guide people to fulfillment and transformation and joy. And Peyton, that's a good teeing off for you. <laughs> Uh, I'm Peyton Pugmire, and my business is Creative Spirit, located in Marblehead, Massachusetts. And I am a spiritual intuitive, an intuition mentor, and a workshop facilitator. Can I just say, I'm super impressed with everybody's backgrounds today. Like, that's a thing, and it takes a while to master it, and I love everybody's background today. So, I don't know if you put love into it, but it's working. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, all right. Let me just review what a nurture is. You know you're a nurture when making other people kind of comfortable or feel safe, or I, I like the word sanctuary, where you're basically creating sanctuary so that other people can thrive. And it's sort of like you're leaning in a little bit instead of like steady presences will lean back and let people come to them. That's their natural posture. But nurtures really like to, oh, I'm gonna make this so great for you. It's gonna, you know, and, 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 if you're not a nurturer, that is exhausting. You're like, really? You're making me help people be comfortable? Like, uh, no. <laughs> I'd rather drink battery acid. I'm, I'm exaggerating, but <laughs> nurturers love that stuff. So I would love to hear from each one of you um, when I describe that, right? What comes up for you? It could be anything. Like, how do you connect with that nurture side of yourself? What is, what is alive for you right now? Amanda. You know, for me, like, my job is literally to be a bridge and I, I feel that that really plays into being a nurturer um, because my job is to make it okay and safe for both sides. So whether you're, you know, an older in your career, or, you know, more advanced in your career or an early in career, my job is to, you know, hey, let's bring it together. Let's hug it out. Let's figure out what, what, is the same about us and so that we can move forward together um, versus, you know, we tend to focus on our differences. And so that to me is really obvious. <laughs> so yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Sarah, how about you? So I feel like my nurturing side comes through um, educating those that work with me or those that seek me out to be educated by me. Um, you know, I am technically in direct sales, if you will, but um, I've sort of always predicated my business on being very available for questions, for information, and sometimes that means with other real estate agents, and oftentimes that means with clients. So a lot of times clients start out feeling more like friends who want to pick my brain um, for information and expertise and guidance. And so it's really all about forming that relationship and supporting them in what they need to be educated to make the best possible decisions. And then, hey, sometimes it results in sales. So that's really where I come from. I'm going to call you a nurturing educator. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Amy Berenson. Yeah. 
So I think the way that I connect to nurturing for me was um, the, the eureka moment of realizing that I could take who I am and bring that to work, if you will, instead of needing to be- I'm gonna call you a nurturer. Sorry about that. I'm just checking okay. out the Facebook group. Go ahead. Okay. Um, instead of me having kind of a corporate uh, persona, which I did for so many years. And so I could just be Amy and, and help people who come to me um, because I love to do that. I love to help people see their own value, see their um, amazing um, set of values and their talents and skills and see the um, emerging confidence and, and joy that they get finally appreciating themselves as well. Wonderful. And Peyton, Peyton Budmeyer. Thank you. Um, so let's see. So in 1998, I came out of the closet as a gay man. And in order to do that, I had to face my greatest fear. And I had to listen to my intuition and own my truth. And since then, um, I'm pretty obsessed with helping people do the same. So like Amy, recognize their own inner beauty, their authenticity, their truth, their feelings, so that we each may love ourselves more deeply and move forward confidently towards our dream. So yeah. Love it. Okay, so uh, now we have a sense as to how nurturing is sort of playing out for you in your work. And uh, what I'm excited to hear about um, is sort of your response to some questions that I've developed just for nurturers, because I find that sometimes we are who we are and we don't even realize the strength that we offer our people. So I like to just, I have two, possibly a third, we'll see how much time we have. I have a, like a third sort of extra question that I might throw in there, but um, this is meant to activate your nurture superpower pretty quickly and their contemplations. And if you're watching this and you're a nurturer, uh, friendly reminder, please ask these questions of yourself like all the time, because it'll just help you remember who you are and focus what you want to say. So I'm going to do a round robin with um, each question. And after that, we will move more into the marketing nitty gritty, like what works for you guys these days. And if you want, what hasn't been working that you wish had worked. <laughs> so let's start off with the first activation question, which is when you think about the people you serve, right? What are you making it safe from? And another way to put that is what are the monsters you're protecting them from? And that can be inner, outer, tangible, intangible, right? It could be their belief system. It could be an, a physical situation. What are the monsters you're protecting them from? Amanda. Um, I think one of the biggest monsters I'm protecting people from are confirmation bias. I mean, everybody has their own bias um, and, you know, whatever you take in, whether it's from the media or whatever, it, it either you, it backs up what you already believed or you can dismiss it. Um, and so that plays out in the workplace and it really has detrimental effects on both sides. Um, so that's one of the big things that I'm protecting people from, but I'm also protecting them from themselves in some ways, um, keeping them from maybe making some not so wise decisions uh, in their career path and how they're moving forward or not moving forward. And that so. goes for the millennials and the Gen Z and the managers. Absolutely. I see this actually a lot in boomers the most. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> we could have a whole discussion about the generations. That's always fun, but yeah, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> so, all right, Sarah, monsters. What are the monsters you're protecting people from, or what are you making it safe from? Sure. So, different industry as Amanda, but I can relate to everything that she has said. Um, so, in working with my clients and with my general sphere, it is um, protecting a lot from judgment from snap judgments, from like protecting people from themselves. Like people either, you know, think the sky's the limit and I need to reel them in or they think something is going to fail automatically. And I've learned, um, you know, in a 20 year 
real estate career that it is not one size fits all by any means. And there are workarounds in many situations, sometimes even the, the most seemingly like failed from the, or doomed from the start type of situations. So, um, yeah, really just protecting, um, my clients and the conversations from judgments and from automatically assuming that it's going to be one way over the other and protecting people from themselves and hopefully, you know, sparing them from bad decision making. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. I'm seeing some common ground here. <laughs> so that brings us to Amy. Yeah, uh, what are yeah. The monsters? it's interesting how, um, how it all relates to people making decisions and choices about which direction they're going to go in. And um, in thinking about this, it's it, for uh, my clients, it's a little bit like the Little Red Riding story, right? We've all been there at some point where um, we're ready for a new path, but we're not sure what it should be. And they, you know, sense the danger in the woods, right? There's... Um, Fear, discontent, lack of clarity, distraction, lack of confidence um, about all these choices. And they don't want to feel lost at all. They, they really want to have some clear direction into where they're going. You know, um, which way do I go? How will I know if it's the right way? Who am I and what do I really want? So those are some of the monsters that I help them wrangle with. Wonderful. Thank you, Amy. Peyton. Um, Tell I, us about the monsters. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. So many, right? So many monsters. Um, Annie Lennox song. Anyway, another, another. <laughs> um, so I'm helping to save people from our overactive, just um, overactive hyper conscious mind. Um, to help us sink back down into our hearts and our subconscious and our unconscious and even the superconscious, which is the source and the level of spirit and our intuition so that we may cut through fears and over analysis in the critical mind um, to connect with our power. All right. Super clear. <laughs> Okay, I feel safer already, you guys. <laughs> but now that we're feeling safe, let's go over to, okay, what's possible? So the question becomes, what are you making it safe for? Like when you consider the people you serve and you actually do make it safe, now what? What does it look like for them to thrive? Mm -hmm. Amanda. So for me, I mean, obviously it's it's very business oriented. It's It's very much, you know, how can we take a team that is okay and make them exceptional? And so my job is really to get in there and clear out the funk, clear out the dynamics that are making things just break down and make them super productive, super efficient, um, and make them into A players. And it doesn't matter what generation they are, although they usually bring me in because, you know, those kids need fixing. Um, but it's usually... <laughs> really a funky dynamic between everybody. And so that's what I do. And I just, I make them, I'm not saying I make them better, but like I help them make themselves better. Mm -hmm. Nice. Love that. Sarah, what does it look like for your people to thrive? So for me, it's really just about, um, again, it's business, but it, it truly is authentic relationships. And so um, the way that I position myself and provide, you know, knowledge and guidance and education to people. It's really about them feeling very comfortable to come to me. And quite often it's just to come to me with like no attachment of any type of outcome. And that works really well for me. Um, people just know that they can lean into whatever it is I have to offer them. And, um, and again, it really empowers them to make the best possible choices. Like it's sort of counterintuitive in um, a commission-based sales business, but I'm the first where I may turn someone away for business because it benefits them. And I will say that that has actually given me um, 
huge rewards because I know my place. Um, I know, you know, where I can help people and where I can't help people. And the best thing is, is that if I say, I'm sorry, I'm not the one, I usually know who the one is. So it's, um, it's really just about those like deeply rooted, trusting, authentic relationships, again, with no attachment to an outcome. And yet it's still, um, benefits my life and my career and, and my clients, especially in their end goals in, in the real estate world. Mm. Nice. Wonderful. Amy, uh, what does it look like for your clients to thrive? Yeah. So my belief is that the clients have the, their answers within them, um, but they cannot, or they will not be able to see them um, when they come to me. So I offer ways to help them zero in on, um, as many of you have mentioned already, and I know Peyton will, on their intuition, on their gut feelings. What energy points them in the right direction as to wh where they should go? Um, and there are often more than one direction. But my goal is to create this um, a very safe and supportive space, almost like a sandbox, where they can play with considering different alternatives, um, looking from different perspectives. They can change their mind. They can see a variety of options because it's, it's an important step. Um, typically my clients are, are looking for the next step in their career um, or jobs, but I want them to be able to connect to their inner resourcefulness and inner creativity so that going forward, when they're not coaching with me, they will have that skill set to be able to make the choices on their own because they know they have an internal um, knowing, an inner knowing in themselves. And then they have the confidence to be able to move forward. Love it. Peyton, I'm sure it's similar, but maybe not. So what does it look like when your clients thrive? Um, everything Amy just said. <laughs> just kidding uh but beautifully said amy and yeah so you know once upon a time way back when when i had my first session with um um christina i imagined this enchanted tent and that's that's what i'm trying to do for my clients is to create this magical enchanted beautiful spirited a virtual space in which people can come in and breathe deeper and recognize and connect with their joys and their passions from big to small, whether it's a huge goal that's been hidden under the covers or, or it's a tiny breadcrumb, a golden breadcrumb, helping them to recognize that so that they can begin to break habits, get out of habits, get out of routine and life patterns that aren't serving them and aren't in alignment with their soul's life purpose. And um, it's not allowing them to borrow from Joseph Campbell to follow their bliss. I'm a huge believer in that faith that we can, we can have our cake and eat it too. So yeah. Yeah. I'm sort of hearing a common ground for all of you. It's sort of you're, you're helping people just live at a higher level in general whether they're tuning into their intuition, really learning to trust themselves. Um, you know, Sarah, my sense also is that you make it safe for people to reach further. I mean, doing any kind of real estate transaction, these are big amounts of money and things come up. So you're just helping people reach for that. And, you know, Amanda, you're helping teams operate at a higher level, just all the way around. And we could have an entire podcast on the power of, a team that's actually in sync with each other. <laughs> like that's very inspiring and exciting and it takes work. So, so we are actually doing fabulous on time. I want to dive in and, and some of you have touched on this already, which um, is a, the sort of extra question for nurturers. Um, and I put it like this, how do you love creating sanctuary? right? Like what kind of sanctuary? So, you know, Peyton has already touched on, well, I just imagine this beautiful tent and it feels like, a, you know, anything is possible there. But, you know, and, and Amanda, I know for you, you love getting on stage and just bringing it and, and helping people connect with you. And, but whatever comes up for you around this, like, you know, how do you like making it safe? How do you like creating that sanctuary? And this can come in any form at all, you could just say, well, I like to make 
pies and I bring people pies. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so Amanda, how do you like to bring that safety and sanctuary? So I think that you've term to me as a nurturing straight talker or straight talking nurturer. And I am, I mean, that's just, I will shoot it to you straight, but I will love you through it. And, you know, I'll hug you through it and we'll get through it together. Um, but that's what I bring. And I, I do that from a stage, which is sounds weird with, with 2000 people and you, and you're doing that for everybody. Or I do it, you know, in workshops. And I mean, I've been known to sit on someone's desk and be like, Richard, we got to talk about this. Like, you know, and just, and that's just, I, I don't really have like a visual on it, but it's just very much like, I will be here with you, like fighting this through because that's just who I am. Um, so yeah, it's just that straight, like, Hey, let's, let's be here together. I'll be by your side, whatever it takes. Um, so yeah, yeah I, my sense is that when, when it, when it's about talking to you, and I include you being on stage and talking, you know, to an audience, it just feels like we're on, you know, a porch with some iced tea, you know, not to, not to stereotype Southern, cause you could do that in the North too, but I'm just saying like, you can just chill and be real. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, just cut through the crap. Absolutely. I mean, it's, I, a lot of people have asked, you know, do I have a therapy background? And I'm like, as of yes as attending yes i do but not as a therapist um because that's just kind of i think what we have to do is we have to kind of move through our own stuff um to really make ourselves in, as individual contributors but then also our team as the best it can be and that's what i do love it love it and you demonstrate what you're trying to create in others which mm -hmm. is just the best thing ever Sarah, um, how do you like to make things safe and comfy and sanctuary or whatever you got there? Yeah. So in, in theory, Amanda and I are sisters from another mister because that's exactly how I am is um, just like that straight talk and cutting through. Um, like I love to say, you know, I'm a real estate professional. I'm also a lawyer. I've never practiced and yet my best professional development was yoga teacher training go figure and it's to get to that root and it allows me to show up professional but still authentic and um, <clears throat> my favorite line with with clients and with other realtors is like can I tell you the brutally honest truth and and that's what it boils down to for me the vehicle is and I know it's really hard in the times of COVID but um one-on-one -on -one, I am really a again, not with COVID, but I'm a touchy feely hugger. Like I want to be at that level with my clients. And so in person, or at least somebody's ability to see me. So I've done really well with video, um, you know, whether it be through social media or on panels such as this, or just, you know, calling with clients on video chat, um, the in-person, the real, the raw, like, yeah, it's about a house. It's about real estate. It's really about a lot more than that. And so just getting, you know, getting real with myself, getting real with my clients, getting real with all of the parties around me. Um, that's, that's, that's the name of the game. Yeah. But loving them through it, of course, as Amanda said, you know, yeah. um, I, I want to see people maybe not happy, but I want to see people reach their goals and whatever that looks like for them. And hopefully happiness is a byproduct. And, you know, I will absolutely stand by people even when it gets ugly because it gets ugly in this industry. So, mm. Yeah. Wonderful. Uh, Amy Berenson. Yeah. So for me, coaching is really an honor. Um, I have an opportunity to really see someone um, and get to know them at a different level than most people do. Um, so helping them find their direction, seeing the change in their being and in what they're doing um, that's what really energizes me. Uh, helping them see their core values, um, like Peyton was saying, defining and actual, actually writing their life purpose statement, um, which is like their deepest why, um, that helps put um, a channel, um, a structure around whatever direction they're headed in. Does it fit? Oops. Does it fit? Does it not fit? Um, and putting their inner critic, my favorite part, in the back seat, 
um, and this is what I, I give workshops on is to teach this tool um, to just get that little negative naysayer out of there and stop and depower it and then connect with their inner wisdom you know their um, their leader within if you will and when they're ready they become absolutely unstoppable to see I wish I had taken photographs before and at the end of their exploration, because I'm just, I'm just a navigatrix and I, I guide them, but they're the ones surging ahead and trying different things. And it's just, uh, it's amazing how energized they can be. Yeah, and I, I remember when we worked together, what you visualized was the sort of wisdom circle where people come in and when they come into that circle, they remember their highest truths and sort of, yeah, deeper wisdom. And um, I've seen you do that in talks every single time. Like you generate that field. That's a way to nurture too. It's mm -hmm. like you bring sanctuary just by generating a field um, and you do it in your own particular way. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Peyton, how do you like to bring sanctuary? I love that word sanctuary. I think about it a lot. And to me, it epitomizes the work I do. Um, and to harken back to that image of this enchanted tent that I saw in meditation with Christina, you know, it's a magical and sacred energy. It's an atmosphere. It's a, it's a gold dust in the air that I always aim to help create in any gathering, whether it's a one-on-one -on -one client session or for now an online workshop or gathering. And, um, you know, it's magical by way of intuition, right? Using our inner knowing. And it's sacred because we are going into our hearts and we do that through meditation, through grounding, through prayer, you know, calling out to angels and ascended masters and calling in spirit, et cetera. So, um, yeah, and it, in, it, in that tent, there's a lot of sharing that happens. And therefore, there's a lot of listening. So I'm a real big fan of um, listening in an uninterrupted fashion, um, because that's so part of the therapy and the healing for all of us, uh, to feel seen and heard. Um, and there's also creativity. So there are opportunities always to express our truths and our intuition through art making, drawing, painting, um, collage, whatever. So to, to borrow Amy's word again, it's, it's a sandbox. So, mm. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. I can testify to pretty much every single one of you that you, you know, you bring sanctuary in that particular way. Cause even Amanda, I haven't been to your talks or work with your senior work with clients, but whenever we talk, <laughs> I get that vibe. So um, I totally appreciate that. And uh, again, if you're listening to this or watching this, I just want to invite you to observe and admire like how comforting it is to hear and nurture talk about their thing. And if you are one, just know that you have this in yourself, your own flavor of it. And if you're not one, I'm sure you have them in your life. And isn't it wonderful to have nurtures around? So let's move into the more tactical, practical stuff. I would love to hear how, you know, how you get out there and nurture your prospects slash potential clients slash wider business community um, and what's really been working for you these days. So Amanda. So predominantly I'm a speaker. Um, so I get paid actually to market my business and <laughs> that is a very privileged place to be. And I understand that. Um, however, Corona came and kind of took a massive sideline. And I ended up losing, obviously, any in-person speaking, but I also lost, um, you know, some consulting projects and, and things like that, just right off the bat. Um, so I really took a hit initially. And so I started thinking, all right, what, what is it that I do well? And it's being with people. And okay, I can't be with you anymore. So now I've switched over and I'm doing a lot of, you know, coaching via Zoom, things like that. But also I last year had this vision of creating a global uh, diversity month. October is global diversity month. 
And so I reached out to a partner of mine in South Africa and I was like, what can we do? They talk about race and ethnicity. I talk about generations and ageism. We went to London and got someone that talks about LGBTQ and a group in India that talks about gender. And we are every week this month, we are putting out content free to anybody. Um, and we are just sharing, like, this is our knowledge, our area of expertise. And we're just educating people um, from around the world. And we have over 5,000 people signed up that are following along with us for this 30 day inclusion challenge. Like how can we create more inclusive environments from each of these dimensions? And it's been this really hard thing to develop, but it's been this really wonderful thing to give to the world because it is it is a very nurturing thing that I'm that I'm putting out there that's like, hopefully changing workplaces for the better. Beautiful. And you have to give me the coordinates. I'm happy to post um, if it's open to the public. Yeah, it is absolutely open to the public and you can, you can start now or and go back or you can start now and go forward. Um, but it's join.30dayinclusionchallenge.com. Oh, cool. You can sign up. Cool. Join.30dayinclusionchallenge.com. Com. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thank you for sharing that. And Sarah, what's been working for you marketing wise these days, especially as a nurturer? Sure. So um, again, a lot of it is just um, one on one and involvement from me with whomever. Um, I'm huge in like starting from a point of service. So for me, um, you know, I've been really deeply involved in my local community. And that's through like charitable organizations. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a member of the Rotary Club, which is an international organization that's all above service, uh, about service above self. So there's a lot of that. And then additionally, um, in the marketing realm, it's really, it's a lot of social media for me, uh, predominantly Facebook, although I do include LinkedIn. And um, again, for people to see me. So, you know, I try to paint a picture both personally and professionally, very authentic. Um, and a lot of video, honestly, video works really, really well for me to people, uh, for people to like see me and get to know, know me, if you will. Um, but I can't wait until it can be back in person. This is really hard for a hugger, a nurturer, like let me be with you. But. <laughs> yeah, you know, this all goes in waves and uh, I don't know, it, it, like after the whole initial back to school thing and all that chaos is sort of stabilizing, there's, I, I'm feeling another trough, <laughs> you know, just like, <laughs> I miss people. Yeah. So, I feel you. Amy Berenson, um, what's been working for you marketing wise? You know, actually the, really the best part of working with a marketing strategist like, like you was getting permission to focus on my own personal style or method of marketing that works for me, that just feels easy for me. That was the best part. Um, you know, I didn't feel like I was getting a cookie cutter. Here are the have to's, you have to do this and you have to do that. Instead, um, we uncovered uh, that workshops were my best um, place to be um, creating that wisdom circle that you mentioned. And it really accomplishes two things for me. One is I, I totally want as many people as possible to have this tool to put the inner critic in the back seat, as I said. Um, and the other is um, similar to Amanda, I'm able to connect with people who are ready for coaching. They need a coach. And so they get to see me sort of um, in person. <laughs> Um, I have been offering this uh, workshop to nonprofits as a fundraiser if they want to gather people. Of course, it's on Zoom. Um, and it does, it does lose a little bit without the chemistry of the person-to-person -person piece, unfortunately. Um, and I, so I also have an online presence through blogging mostly that um, is based on working with clients and uh, offering um, suggestions, ideas, experiences, really sharing some of the experiences. Because what I found is that 
the themes that my clients come to me with are are often very universal and if they feel that way there's thousands of other people out there that feel the same way um, and I hope that it inspires people to go after what they want instead of just sitting in uncertainty. I will also add to this because, you know, I see you a lot in, in just other parts of my life. So I, you know, you're the president of a networking group that I'm part of. And to me, I watch you nurture there and connect and take care of people. Not that you might not see it that way, but that's how it comes across. Like we feel very well taken care of and you're building relationships with a wider community in, in that way. So mm. I want to thank you like that. Peyton, um, what has been working for you marketing wise? Um, doing what I do and and believing what I believe when it comes to intuition and intuitive living, um, <laughs> it hit me in the past couple of years while running my, my business that I have to align my marketing with those same values. I have to market intuitively and be in alignment with my joys and my truth. And so through my marketing in general, I'm always striving to present myself in that light of authentic service, you know, that, that truthful, messy, magical, wacky, crazy truth that we all are. And um, there's vulnerability in that. And so specifically what that looks like, I use a lot of Instagram. I would say Instagram is my easy go-to effective tool that then disperses to other um, online platforms and my, my posts are a mix of, um, just direct ads for upcoming services or workshops, but then I mix them with, um, some videos, some musings on life and spirit and intuition. Um, I share kind of those behind the scenes glimpses into my life and my creativity and my passions and interests. Um, so the people are getting to meet me, they're getting to meet the intuitive um, behind the service. And, um, and in general, too, I, I try to post only when I feel moved to, to do so. When I post something because that logical, rational part of my brain says, oh, it's time to post something, that's usually when I post it and I, then I feel gross. You know? So it's trying to stay in alignment with what is feeling good for me, what my heart wants to share, and the timing. Am I honoring the timing as well? Nice. I was just going to say, if you don't mention Instagram, I will, because you're doing a great job on there. Um, and I love how you're just real. Like, hey, I'm having a crap day today, and I need to meditate more. Like, you're just really open about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, And then you inspire us to, to do the same, because you're just being human. Okay. Um, wonderful. Well, I would love to sort of wind this down by hearing from each of you, since we're going through this COVID election craziness right now, um, and it's just a very different time, that, you know, if there was one thing you could just tell people to help them through, um, and you're really good at this, you know, just saying. Um, so I would just love to hear, like, if somebody's having a tough time, and it, they don't know when this is going to end, which pretty much describes every American and everyone on the whole planet. But anyway, um, if somebody is going through a tough time and they're wondering how to navigate this, like, what do you got? What would you tell them? Amanda. So I, I had to actually check myself on this very recently. Um, I had to cut off social media, except for LinkedIn, because <laughs> that's where my challenge is happening. Um, but honestly, I had to cut it out because the negative was getting to be too much for me. Um, I tend to soak in that a lot. And I, I just, I had to make a decision to, to cut it out and only listen to positive things, um, meditating a lot on things like that. Um, but just watch, watch what's coming in for me and monitor it all the time. So love that. talk about managing your own sanctuary. I appreciate that. Mm. Sarah McBurney. I, I don't know how this has happened, but I have become the queen of ignoring um, I do know like a number of years ago, I had cut out uh, TV for my daughter and I, which was a huge game changer. 
Um, TV is back in our household. However, I do not watch the news. I do not watch any type of reports. I do not read any type of reports. And I know that there are some out there who would call me ignorant. However, it's called peace of mind. And I can be the sanctuary when everyone else can be the expert on what's going on in the world. So when everyone says, oh, did you watch the debate? I'm like, oh, there was, there was a debate? Oh, okay. Um, I just, like, I haven't cut out social media. I like it too much. I, um, I get a lot of information and I stay in contact with a lot of people, both business and personal through social media. So I literally just ignore, scroll and ignore. And I don't know, I somehow have earmuffs and I have, you know, virtual eye cover. Like I just, I don't know, I just block it out completely. Um, it's really, you know, and, and, and it's funny, it must be to a point where I exude the, like, no one even tries to talk about that stuff with me. Like, I'm at that place where it's like, I must emanate, like, I'm in la la land, and you can be in your world, and I'll just stay over here in my bubble, including my husband, who is very politically driven, and even he knows to just, don't talk to me about it. Nice. Nice. So Amy, um, if someone's going through a hard time right now, uh, is yep. there something you want to share with them or that you would say to them? You know, I'm a silver lining gal. I, I think I always have been. And my strategy is I do watch a few things here and there. I, I don't do um, Facebook or Twitter. Um, there's too much misinformation, but I focus on the afterwards. Like, we are going to get through this. We are going to get past this. We are going to have a, a vaccine. And just like the polio epidemic, which some of us lived through and others of, others of you are, haven't been born yet, but um, we got through that. And that was really awful because nobody even knew anything about it or what would happen and it all it affected children. So um, focus on life after COVID and just hang in there. It's just gonna be a few more months. It might be six months, might be 12 months, but it will go past. And that's what keeps me going um, at this point in time, because life will get better. And I do wanna tip my hat to you um, that, you know, as the leader of this group, and you've been the leader since basically the beginning of COVID, um, I just wanna say how much I appreciate your steadiness through that through all of it. So oh. thank you for being such a great um, leader in that sure. group. Thank you. Yeah. Peyton, uh, someone's having a tough time right now. What would you say to them about everything? What I want to share is my own experience, which is I'm very much aware these days of my negative self-talk, um, my inner critic, all of those voices within me that are constantly saying things like you're not good enough or that's going to fail that's not going to work or that's the session that you're going to be exposed you know as a complete phony um those are the voices that um i'm just really aware of these days and so i want to say let us be aware of changing the record let us be aware of starting with ourself, being more uh, self-compassionate, really up the love of ourself. Um, and for all the negative voices and the negative phrases that we hear, even unconsciously, rewrite them and speak the positive opposite to ourselves. Um, so yeah. Hmm. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, on that note, <laughs> I'm very thankful that each one of you took the time today to share, you know, just how you connect to nurturing people. Um, and just being here, you demonstrate a way of being because there is this interesting mass consciousness belief that marketing has to be tactical, strategic, and get results. But there's not a lot of consideration for, well, who are you really? Like what's your higher and what I call your deeper why? What's your deeper why in service to others? So this is what it looks like people, when people actually take that into consideration and grow their business really successfully. Like these are results 
right? Each of you has a, th a thriving business. I mean, COVID withstanding um, has a, a healthy business, let's call it that, and that you're well positioned to um, just help others and thrive now and after everything. Uh, I, I feel like that is something that is so key is that, you know, this is a time to build trust as we're all just making our way through chaos and unknown and stress. It's like, the, who is going to lean in and really be there for others? Because no one's going to forget that. No one's going to forget how you're nurturing or however it is you help people, right? Um, so I, I, if you're listening to this, I hope this has given you some inspiration about um, how you could do it, because I know you can. And I so appreciate you for listening to this and joining us today. So um, Amanda, Sarah, Amy, Peyton, I'm so glad you're in my life and that I've gotten to work with you. And thank you for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. This was an honor. It was yeah. fun to hear everybody's perspective on this. It was. It was. I, I really loved how there was a lot of similarities. That was yes. a lot more than I was expecting. Yeah. yeah. The word that's overarching for me is authenticity and caring. You know? Yeah, definitely. So, I love that. And you know what? As we're winding down, I want to say one thing about authenticity. Um, because Seth Godin actually thinks that it's the opposite of professionalism. And I, I think what's missing there is there's a higher authenticity when you're authentic to your values. And then there's a lower authenticity where you're like, well, I don't really feel like doing this project today. So I'm going to be late with it. And oh, well, that's just how I was feeling. <laughs> right, right. Like there's two different kinds of authenticity. I think it depends on where you're coming from. So I just had to insert that in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm just going to turn off the Facebook Live. Thanks, you guys.